Hi, in this lesson let's talk about online auctions. So online auction sites are terrific from a peer-to-peer -peer perspective, very popular C2C consumer to consumer. You know, uh, eBay is obviously uh, hands down the market leader, but there are hundreds of auction sites uh, out in the United States alone and popping up all the time. Um, portals are, have been involved in this. Online retail sites are increasingly adding auctions to their sites to allow different ways to um, to reach consumers on their own terms, to uh, get rid of overstock items. Uh, uh, so there's a variety of uh, reasons for uh, utilizing online auctions. So the, some of the top characteristics of uh, online auctions really come from its pricing models. Uh, the ability to adjust pricing and not one price fits all, but really be ultra competitive, uh, obviously through discounting and, and, and uh, couponing uh, to lower pricing to, to get more customers uh, based on deals that are set up uh, uh, from, the, uh, from the retail or the e-commerce site. Uh, uh, airline tickets based on availability, premium of location, a variety of tactics um, to dynamically change those prices. Hotel t uh, reservations dynamically change. Um, and there's whole sets of aggregators that get involved in this. The Travelocities of the World, the Or Orbits, uh, Expedia, um, on the hotel side, Hotels.com, Priceline. Um, so the prices are really based on true demand. Uh, and how the customer is, you know, able to uh, actually take advantage, then as well as the supplier take advantage uh, based on their supply situation. So if they've got a lot of uh, inventory, they might want to drastically lower their prices for a short period of time uh, to move it before. Uh, so at the end of the summer, to move their summer goods out before the fall uh, season of stock comes in. Um, and there are different types. Uh, within uh, dynamic pricing, there's bundling of, of uh, goods and assortments together in collections. There's trigger pricing based on time of day deals uh, or seat availability, let's say on the airline side or room availability or hotel. Utilization pricing, again, very similarly based on availability. And then personalized pricing, uh, maybe very specific to the needs of a premium consumer uh, to give them the, uh, the price that they need because of affinity relationship or loyalty relationships uh, as examples. So uh, within uh, a consumer to consumer C2C, uh, the auction house essentially is an inter intermediator or a marketplace uh, such as eBay. So selling your used cars, selling your used books uh, through eBay, um, one consumer to another, peer to peer, person to person. Uh, B2B auctions, uh, you know, might be a business who owns assets, uh, wants to get, as I mentioned, uh, excess inventory, overstock goods, use an auction model, use an auction marketplace such as eBay, overstock.com, or maybe run something off their own e-commerce site to actually get these, uh, to clear out their inventory. Again, within a supply chain perspective, high uh, inner, uh Inventory holdings uh, sitting on the shelf within your warehouse or in your shelf uh, on your stores costs money. So it's always advantageous to optimize your supply chain, optimize your inventory by turning it over. Um, dynamic pricing obviously used to sell goods and services, uh, but also to allocate and bundle resources. Um, auctions are very liquid. Um, some of the, um, you know, the transactions happen it can really help businesses really understand what is the true nature of the, of the value and set pricing. So that can be used in other part of the parts of the business. Um, consumers benefit from price transparency because inherently um, they begin to see uh, how suppliers, how low they can, they can go when product... Uh, uh, margins are cut for, for goods that are especially on the overstock side. 
Um, obviously, some of these uh, from the supplier end or the retailer end might be uh, loss losses just to recoup what they can of uh, excess inventory that's not selling. Uh, but on the high end, um, uh, through auctions, they might have found, uh, retailers might find that they were charging too little in their stores or on their e-commerce site for certain premium goods. Uh, so there's a natural efficiency in the marketplace that really comes to bear during auction so you can learn a lot from other parts of your business in terms of positioning, pricing, marketing campaigns. Um, auctions typically have uh, uh, low transaction uh, costs. Uh, they also have benefits from aggregating customers into locations. So there's uh, typical types of customers that aggregate and feed off of uh, auctions. They, uh, and there's a network effect of, of uh, scalability of consumers um, taking advantage of auctions and auction type dynamic pricing environments to find uh, good value goods. And value to each individual could be at a premium level or a, a super low cost level, both ends of the spectrum. So while there are risks, um, there are delayed uh, consumption costs in terms of uh, the fact that bids are placed, um, uh, the transaction might not, might, might take a you know, four hours for a daily deal, uh, and might be dependent upon, uh, you know, a volume, uh, 50% off of 100 people purchase, uh, or it might be a 48 hour auction, things like that. So there's delays inherently within an auction model. Um, but you're also to be able to, uh, as a consumer benefit from, if you know the price you want to pay for a new item, a used item, you can submit a bid. There's a there's potentially ways to actually uh, use auction models for fixed pricing, but you can also put together watch lists. I know I've done that where I say, well, I'm looking for this rare book. I put it out on uh, eBay. If this book becomes available, alert me with an instant message or an email. Uh, and then there's uh, proximity bidding. If 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 um uh, if a good that I'm interested in buying. Uh, is between you know ten and fifteen dollars, and it shows up on an auction. Send me a message. I might want to get involved in that. Uh, equipment costs, uh, trust risks, fulfillment costs are all components of uh, auction markets. On the trust side, uh, rating systems help uh, you know within the seller and buyer because even you have the C to C, uh, there's many uh, many many. Uh, sellers within uh, within a marketplace and an auction marketplace, so they have different levels of reliability. So uh, rating systems are of great benefit to be able for uh, consumers to come in and say, "Hmm, this guy's got consistently thousands of orders and deliveries and five stars, whereas someone else has three stars. Maybe I won't uh, want to take advantage of bidding on his products." And then there's the fulfillment costs. Typically, drop ship models are used because the eBay and the consumer to consumer, seller to buyer is a, a marketplace model. Uh, eBay is not running the distribution center. Uh, there is an inherent um, fee that's you know typically passed on to the to the buyer for things like UPS, DHL, and and other types of delivery fulfillment services. So, from a market maker running the marketplace. You carry no inventory, as I mentioned. You have no warehouses. You're not involved in the shipping and logistics. So there's costs. There's there's managing facilities, um, but you still make money. I mean, eBay makes money from every stage in the cycle, uh, from each transaction. Uh, they make money on the buyer side and then on the seller side. On the seller side, they they charge listing fees. So if I'm going to get rid of an inventory of textbooks uh, from the last semester. Uh, or review copies, I have to pay eBay money to put my book up on uh, up on eBay. Uh, there's financial service fees. Uh, so within the uh, PayPal, Google Wallet type uh, payment processes, um, there are uh, financial services fees that the uh, market maker, uh, such as eBay, uh, will charge to uh, the buyer, the seller, uh, because they have to 
also, uh, you know, one of one of the inherent natures of of, uh, of the market maker is to actually handle the order process from so the shopping cart, the payment processing. So they establish that relationship with the Visa, Discover Card, etc., um, as well as the Google Wallet and, and PayPal. So there are financial fees that that have to be passed on to both the buyer and the seller. And then there's uh, the capability to uh, to make money off of uh, advertising fees and placement fees. So uh, on the internet, you know the basic capabilities uh, that differ from traditional auctions uh, is that number one, they they last longer. Um, you know, in some in many instances, a week. You know, sometimes days, sometimes hours. Uh, there are a variable number of bidders who come and go. Uh, from the auction arena. So you might be in for a little while and you might take off. So when you think about it, in the physical brick and mortar, the Sotheby's, uh, you know, the art auctions or the, the classic ones you see on television or the movies, um, where people come into a room or, or to a showcase and they actually hold up a, a sign or wave their hand, uh, these take place within minutes uh, and, and typically last, you know, five, ten minutes, half an hour, what have have you, but no longer than that. Whereas uh, the internet auctions are, are very asymmetrical or asynchronous, if you will, um, and they last quite a bit longer, uh, hours and days. Uh, so with inherently with dynamic priced markets, you know, in neutral markets, there's the number of, of buyer and sellers is, is few, so there's the dynamic is not that great, um, but when they're biased towards the seller, um, there's typically a lot of buyers come in. Uh, but when they're biased towards the buyer, uh, there's a lot of sellers. So that, those are a bit of the skews as far as that. Again, inherently through auctions, over time, buyers and sellers really get a great sense of what fair market value is. So. Uh, for the goods and services that they're selling. So um, used goods, new goods, uh, premium goods, uh, commodity goods. So, um, you know, e-commerce businesses, you know, may experiment with auction markets to test, test their market pricing on new products. Okay, so price allocation, uh, you know, there's, there's different types of pricing rules. Uniform, where multiple winners who all pay the same price. So uh, there's no, uh, you know, individual winner, but then there's discriminatory pricing where the winners may pay a different amount depending on what they bid and uh, the ultimate uh, finality of the sale. Um, when you get to information um, about public and private information, um, some internet auctions allow businesses to uh, keep the prices uh, secret, but those, you, know, you got to be uh, careful with that. There could be uh, different bid riggings going on to drive up the prices um, by people who really don't have any intention in, in buying. On the open side, the much more preferred side, uh, pricing is transparent, people are able to match prices um, and, and, and see the information about uh, the various bids. So. Um, there's there's a bit more of a comfort level in uh, in that, but again, uh, private information bidding could be for highly premium collectible uh, types of uh, uh, high end goods. So uh, different biases between buyers and sellers. Uh, on your top left, you got very negotiable, market neutral. On the bottom right. Uh, also market neutral, uh, but you got many to many, many buyers, many sellers. So stock exchanges are big examples. Uh, eBay has many sellers, um, excuse me, many buyers, uh, but may have few sellers. Uh, so that's an example of uh, many buyers, few sellers. And then Priceline and sealed bidding uh, has many sellers, uh, but uh, fewer buyers. As you can see, there are many types of uh, auctions and pricing mechanisms. 
here's a, a table that's in your book, 11.5, uh, that shows. Well, let's go. Let's go a few through a few of them. A typical eBay, uh, though eBay supports multiple. A uh, single item up for sale to a single seller, uh, highest bid wins. So many, many bidders. Uh, you know, a period of time that the auction is held for is known as an English auction. A traditional duck auction is another one, which uses a clock and uh, has a starting uh, point. The clock ticks down until the buyer stops it by uh, reaching the pr agreed upon prices, um, or the buyer is the only one left uh, with a bid that's reasonable. And that's typical uh, through hundreds of years through the flower growers over in Holland where it gets its name, the Dutch auction. But the Dutch internet auction is uh, slightly different, and you'll see this on more group deals. Uh, it's typically used for uh, sellers, uh, can be done on eBay or on sale, uh, where they want to get rid of lots of goods, uh, LOTS, uh, you know, uh, multiple, so identical products. So let's say you've got 10 laptops at $735 a piece. Uh, so they got 10 identical items. Uh, you bid on quantity and you go in bid on dollar amount at that price. So uh, it's an ascending price, multiple units. The fixed price is the lowest successful bid, which then sets the price for all higher bids. So um, that's a Dutch internet. Uh, name your own price options are, are very uh, popular, where users say, this is my pain point, this is what I'm willing to pay for goods and services for multiple providers. Uh, prices do not descend and they are fixed. Um, the consumer is committed to buy at that price. Uh, Priceline is big into this area uh, where they're aggregating uh, travel uh, uh, destinations, uh, trips, uh, uh, airline reservations, hotel reservations, car rentals, home finance uh, rates. Um, enables sellers to unload excess capacity, as you see with the Oh, excess hotel rooms or excess seating on airlines. Uh, group uh, buying auctions or demand aggregators where group buying of products is dynamically adjusted and discounting is based on high volume uh, purchases. Sellers are more likely to offer discounts to buyer purchasing in bulk or volume and uh, as buyers increase their purchases prices will fall. You'll see this in the commodity business especially as we mentioned earlier in the MRO, uh, maintenance, repair, and overhaul space for facility, plumbing, uh, electronic components, things like that. You'll also see in uh, professional services auctions, um, big in uh, freelance services, programmers, designers, writers, in uh, sites such as elance.com. So the factors to consider, uh, this is a great graphic to help you in choosing auctions and Think about the type of product you're selling. Is it rare? Is it unique? Is it commodity? Uh, is it perishable? And then, uh, then apply the uh, specific pricing dynamic or uh, auction model that's appropriate. Um, it could, you could be looking at a seller bias versus a buyer bias. So um, uh, low inventory, obviously a seller bias, or high amount of inventory and close out, more of a buyer bias. And starting out with initial pricing set at various levels, either high, low, and increments amount of, of small or large. Uh, and then the auction length. Is it going to be a short term, uh, minutes, hours, uh, short days, or, or week, or, or longer? And then single item or multiple item, um, uniform versus discretionary, all different options. Uh, and then how much information are you sharing? Is it open, public, or private? So, uh, when consumers, uh, sellers have to profit when consumers, uh, at their arrival rates, their auction length, and the number of units at the auction, um, auction prices are not necessarily the lowest. Um, so, auctions don't have to be the lowest priced goods. Um, you know, there are results that happen at, at auctions that have to be concerned about because you're going to get feedback through uh, testimonials and, and um, uh, social conversation. So winners might regret 
uh, having paid a higher price if the market actually shows, uh, you know, maybe there was some rigging going on or, or at least the feeling of bid rigging that was going on. Sellers might lament that they sold lower than they had hoped for, and the losers might lament that they weren't able to get the product that they wanted, uh, even though they weren't able to come up with the price. So all of these factors in to consumer behavior. Um, you know, the sellers, again, you know, will buyers show up? Uh, will they show up? Do they need to adjust the length of their auction? Uh, did they have enough items to actually auction off? Um, and consumer trust is, is hugely important in motivating. You know, the style of consumer uh, that lends itself to um, and their behavior that lends itself to auction. This graphic shows the dynamics of uh, auction profitability. The, an auction's profit is determined by the arrival rate at the auction. So N, the number of people, uh, as shown, 5, uh, 20, 40. And the length of the auction, T, down at the bottom on the timeline, at auction length from 0 to 7. Uh, profitability rises at first, but then falls off rapidly as costs rise. Uh, uh, profits also rise as the number of units auctioned up uh, to a maximum point and then rapidly uh, fall off. So this is a, a good way to look at profitability, engaging how many uh, people are going to arrive, how many uh, items you're going to sell, and uh, the timing, all those factors in the profitability equation. So when auction markets fail, fraud and abuse in, uh, are, are the primary reasons why auction markets fail, rate bids, information uh, asymmetry. The, one of the reasons people feel uh, or are attracted to auctions because they feel that the pricing, the costs are very transparent. The whole idea uh, of internet commerce in itself, uh, there's less propensity for hiding and hoarding of information. Information is very transparent. So there's a feeling that uh, there's uh, an asymmetrical uh, bias towards a seller versus a buyer on the information that's out there, this is going to hurt your auction market. Uh, if you're a monopoly and you have the power to keep prices high, uh, that's probably not going to help you uh, in an auction market. There's in external factors uh, that may also come into play. But by 2011, the internet auto action fraud uh, are are very very uh, high in terms of types of fraud reported. So it's 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 you know you have to go into internet auctions with the idea of your corporate responsibility and reputation as part of how you you'll approach e-commerce uh, using an auction model.